NASA's latest budget proposal just made a bold and smart move. It's pulling the plug on the outrageously expensive space launch system and shifting gears toward more affordable commercial rockets. While the space community is largely cheering this decision, one big question hangs in the air. What kind of rocket could possibly take the place of NASA's iconic SLS? Enter SpaceX's Falcon Heavy, a rocket that's quickly emerging as a shining contender. Known for its impressive payload capacity, solid reliability record, and most importantly, a launch cost that's just a fraction of the SLS, Falcon Heavy is turning heads. But here's the catch. Falcon Heavy still doesn't quite match the raw power of the SLS, especially for deep space missions like Artemis that demand massive payloads and loads of fuel. So why is Falcon Heavy still being considered as a potential replacement for NASA's moon missions? And how exactly could it take us to the lunar surface without the SLS? We're breaking it all down in today's episode of TechMap. Don't miss it. The Space Launch System, or SLS, is still under construction inside NASA's massive vehicle assembly building, with its next launch slated for April 2026. But here's the catch. It only has one more chance to prove itself with Artemis III, currently not expected before mid-2027. After that, it could be scrapped entirely under the White House's latest budget proposal. For diehard space fans, the SLS is a legendary machine. But let's be real, the controversy and delays surrounding its development have left many wondering. In a time when private companies are launching rockets for a fraction of the cost, why are we still holding on to a non-reusable rocket that costs $4 billion every time it flies? Especially after more than 10 years of development, when it was only launched once. That's a tough sell compared to younger, more active commercial rockets. Take SpaceX's Falcon Heavy. Since 2018, this powerhouse has been launched 11 times successfully. In 2021, NASA even trusted it with a $332 million contract to send key components for the Lunar Gateway. That's a big vote of confidence. So, naturally, the question arises. Could Falcon Heavy take over the moon mission duties from NASA's pricey SLS? Well, not exactly. Falcon Heavy is smaller, delivering 16.8 tons to translunar orbit. The SLS Block 1 edges it out significantly, with a capacity of over 27 tons to the same destination. Deep space missions like Artemis need hefty payloads and tons of fuel. That means big rockets, or does it? What if we didn't need to rely on one giant rocket? Instead, we could launch multiple reusable rockets, one for the payload, others for extra fuel. These rockets can fly again and again, moving more cargo into space for far less money. For example, four Falcon Heavy launches could deliver more than a single SLS trip and do it for much less cash. We've already mastered orbital docking since 1966, so piecing things together in space isn't a new idea. We don't need one big rocket if we can assemble everything up there. Reusable rockets have already proven their value. So why not take that $4 billion per launch and invest it in in-space refueling tech and infrastructure? That seems a lot smarter than sticking with the outdated SLS. Plus, countries like China are racing ahead with reusable rocket tech. If NASA clings to the old way, it could fall behind. Clearly, the White House's 2026 budget proposal gets it right. Instead of pouring billions into the slow, expensive SLS program, we should back reusable commercial rockets and space-based construction. It's faster, cheaper, and a better path to exploring the moon, Mars, and beyond. However, there are still major technical hurdles to overcome. For instance, Integrating NASA's Orion spacecraft with SpaceX's Falcon Heavy could significantly impact mission timelines due to various engineering, certification, and infrastructure challenges. First up, engineering and modifications. Falcon Heavy's payload fairing and structure aren't designed for Orion, so NASA and SpaceX would need to create custom adapters and modify the fairing to safely house Orion 
and its launch abort system. This would require extensive structural and aerodynamic testing, no small task in terms of time and resources. Second, mission profile changes. Unlike the SLS, which can send Orion directly on a translunar trajectory, Falcon Heavy would likely need to first place Orion and an upper stage like the ICPS into low Earth orbit. From there, the upper stage would fire again to send Orion toward the moon. This two-step process adds complexity and potential delays. Third, certification and safety testing. Falcon Heavy would need to be certified to NASA's extremely high standards for crewed missions. This includes validating that it works flawlessly with Orion systems and launch abort system, along with multiple test flights to prove its reliability. That kind of certification takes time and can delay any upcoming missions. Fourth, ground infrastructure, upgrades, Launch Complex 39A at Kennedy Space Center would need serious upgrades to support the new integration setup, fueling operations, and vertical stacking of Orion on Falcon Heavy. These infrastructure changes introduce additional scheduling risks. Fifth, risk and schedule trade-offs. NASA acknowledges that adapting Falcon Heavy for crewed Orion missions comes with risk, cost, and time. Some officials believed that with enough funding and prioritization, it might be possible to make this work for lunar missions in the near future, possibly even by 2024. But that timeline is very optimistic. Finally, potential delay. Compared to SLS, the SLS and Orion were built to operate as a pair. Swapping out the SLS for Falcon Heavy isn't a plug-and-play option. Integration challenges mean delays are almost inevitable. In summary, while technically possible, integrating Orion with Falcon Heavy would almost certainly extend mission timelines. Falcon Heavy is a powerful and proven system, but replacing SLS for crewed lunar missions won't happen without trade-offs in timing and risk. Or can we use Dragon to replace Orion? Well, NASA would shut down that idea pretty quickly, and with good reason. The Crew Dragon was designed specifically for missions in low Earth orbit, so sending it to the moon would require major modifications. As former NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine once put it, I'm not saying you couldn't modify it, but if you modified it, it would look a lot like Orion. Here's why. Crew Dragon doesn't have enough Delta V to get into and out of lunar orbit on its own. That means you'd need to add another propulsion stage or vehicle to push it toward the moon and bring it back. Plus, for multi-day missions, you'd have to beef up the life support systems and add better radiation shielding to protect astronauts. That includes upgrades for managing consumables and waste during the trip. Then there's re-entry. Coming back from the moon is a whole different ballgame. Lunar return speeds reach about 11 kilometers per second, which generates extreme heat. The Pika-X heat shield used on Crew Dragon is optimized for re-entering from low Earth orbit at about 7.8 kilometers per second. Re-entering at lunar speeds would create much more stress and heat, and the current system just isn't built for that. Yes, SpaceX could technically modify the Dragon, but right now it hasn't been tested or certified for those kinds of lunar conditions. So, that's where SpaceX Starship comes in. SpaceX's Starship is a strong contender for NASA's future missions to the Moon and Mars for several key reasons. First, it's designed specifically for long-distance space travel, making it capable of carrying both astronauts and essential cargo across vast distances. One of Starship's most impressive features is its reusability. Starship can be launched, landed, and reused multiple times, dramatically lowering the cost of space travel and making frequent missions more financially viable. It also runs on advanced engines powered by methane and liquid oxygen, fuels that can potentially be produced on Mars, offering a critical advantage for deep space missions by enabling in-space or planetary refueling. In collaboration with NASA, SpaceX is adapting Starship to safely land humans on the moon. The vehicle is capable of docking with other spacecraft in lunar orbit and then transporting astronauts to and from the moon's surface. 
Another game-changing feature is its ability to refuel while already in space. This makes it possible for Starship to carry heavier payloads and travel greater distances without needing to return to Earth. Compared to older spacecraft, Starship offers a much larger capacity for both crew and equipment, which is vital for supporting long-term space exploration and building sustainable outposts on other celestial bodies. With NASA backing and ongoing testing by SpaceX, Starship is quickly becoming one of the most promising tools for pushing human presence deeper into the solar system. Now Starship has reached an exciting new phase with its Block 2 design being tested on Flights 7 and 8. Although both flights ended in explosions, these setbacks gave the SpaceX team valuable information that will help them improve and upgrade the rocket for future missions. Flight 7, launched on January 16, 2025, from Starbase in Texas, saw early success when its first stage booster, Super Heavy Booster 14, separated properly and was caught by the launch tower, an impressive milestone. However, trouble arose with the upper stage, Ship 33, which experienced a fire around 8 minutes and 26 seconds into the flight. This fire, triggered by an oxygen and fuel leak above the engine firewall, created a pressure buildup that overwhelmed the venting system. The resulting damage caused a loss of communication, prompting the onboard flight safety system to trigger self-destruction to prevent an uncontrolled failure. Ship 33 exploded over the Turks and Caicos Islands, scattering debris but causing no injuries. The FAA responded by grounding further Starship launches and initiating an investigation. Flight 8, meant to test improvements, unfortunately suffered a similar fate when the upper stage again broke apart mid-flight due to lingering issues related to structural stress and propellant leaks. In response, SpaceX implemented 11 corrective actions, including strengthening fuel lines, adjusting fuel temperatures, adding more vents and a new purge system to manage pressure, and reinforcing structural elements. The failures also highlighted the value of SpaceX's rapid iterative testing model, enabling quick learning and design improvements. Despite the explosions, flight safety systems functioned correctly, ensuring controlled terminations and protecting surrounding areas. However, the incidents also raised concerns about debris fallout in the Caribbean, underlining the importance of improving community relations and launching debris management. While Starship flights 7 and 8 both ended in upper stage failures driven by unforeseen vibrations and fuel leaks, the lessons learned from these missions are proving essential for improving structural resilience and bringing SpaceX closer to a fully reliable Starship system.